Day 239, Jeremiah 30-33, The Lord will turn mourning to joy. Chapter 30, Restoration for Israel and Judah. 31, The Lord will turn mourning to joy. The New Covenant. 32, Jeremiah buys a field during the siege and pray for understanding. They shall be my people, I will be their God. 33. The Lord promises peace, the Lord's eternal covenant with David. God's promise of restoration begins a section describing both the worst of horrors, the time of Jacob's trouble, and the best of blessings, God's new covenant with Israel. God pledges to re-establish the nation after it had been purified by the discipline of exile. As a sign of his promise, he orders Jeremiah to purchase a field that would soon belong to the conquering Babylonians. As surely as they follow right, that land would one day become part of the restored nation to be ruled by the righteous branch, David's messianic descendant. Jeremiah chapter 30 This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. The days are coming, declares the Lord when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave to their ancestors to possess, says the Lord. These are the words the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard. Terror, not peace. Ask and see. Can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor, every face turned deathly pale? How awful that day will be! No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid, Jacob my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security, and no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is what the Lord says. Your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your cause, no remedy for your sore, no healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you, they care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would, and punished you as would the cruel, because your guilt is so great and your sins so many. Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. All who make spoil of you, I will despoil. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. This Lord's, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. 
This Lord's, I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents, and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Will be as in add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Will be as in add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Will be as in near and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. So you will be my people, and I will be your God. See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand this. Jeremiah chapter 31 At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. This is what the Lord says. The people who survive the sword will find favor in the wilderness. I will come to give rest to Israel. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Again you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day when watchmen cry out on the hills of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Jacob. Shout for the foremost of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame, expectant mothers and women in labor. A great throng will return. They will come with weeping. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble, because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. Hear the word of the Lord, you nations. Proclaim it in distant coastlands. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. For the Lord will deliver Jacob and redeem them from the hand of those stronger than they. They will come and shout for joy on the heights of Zion. They will rejoice in the bounty of the Lord, the grain the new wine and the olive oil, the young of the flocks and herds. They will be like a well-watered garden, and they will sorrow no more. Then young women will dance and be glad, young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I will satisfy the priests with abundance, and my people will be filled with my bounty, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. So there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's moaning. You disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. 
Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breast. I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim, my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion for him, declares the Lord. Set up road signs. Put up guideposts. Take note of the highway, the route that you take. Return, virgin Israel, return to your towns. How long will you wander, unfaithful daughter Israel? The Lord will create a new thing on earth. The woman will return to the man. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down, and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say, The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says, He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and the stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, the Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, Will Israel ever cease being a nation before me? This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when this city will be rebuilt for me from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The measuring line will stretch from there straight to the hill of Gareb, and then turn to Goa. The whole valley where dead bodies and ashes are thrown, and all the terraces out to the Kidron Valley on the east, as far as the corner of the horse gate, will be holy to the Lord. The city will never again be uprooted or demolished. Jeremiah chapter 32 this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah king of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar.
The army of the king of Babylon was then besieging Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. Now Zedekiah king of Judah had imprisoned him there, saying, Why do you prophesy as you do? You say, This is what the Lord says, I am about to give this city into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will capture it. Zedekiah king of Judah will not escape the Babylonians, but will certainly be given into the hands of the king of Babylon and will speak with him face to face and see him with his own eyes. He will take Zedekiah to Babylon, where he will remain until I deal with him, declares the Lord. If you fight against the Babylonians, you will not succeed. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of Shalom your uncle, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field at Anathoth, because, as nearest relative, it is your right and duty to buy it. Then, just as the Lord had said, my cousin Hanamel came to me in the courtyard of the guard and said, Buy my field at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. Since it is your right to redeem it and possess it, buy it for yourself. I knew that this was the word of the Lord. So I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him seventeen shekels of silver. I signed and sealed the deed, had it witnessed, and weighed out the silver on the scales. I took the deeds of purchase, the sealed copy containing the terms and conditions, as well as the unsealed copy. And I gave this deed to Baruch, son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, and of the witnesses who had signed the deed, and of all the Jews sitting in the courtyard of the guard. In their presence I gave Baruch these instructions. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Take these documents, both the sealed and unsealed copies of the deed of purchase, and put them in a clay jar so that they will last a long time. For this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. After I had given the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, I prayed to the Lord. Ah. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You show love to thousands, but bring the punishment for the parents' sins into the laps of their children after them. Great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord Almighty, great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Your eyes are open to the ways of all mankind. You reward each person according to their conduct and as their deeds deserve. You performed signs and wonders in Egypt and have continued them to this day in Israel and among all mankind and have gained the renown that is still yours. You brought your people Israel out of Egypt with signs and wonders by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with great terror. You gave them this land you had sworn to give to their ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. They came in and took possession of it, but they did not obey you or follow your law. They did not do what you commanded them to do, so you brought all this disaster on them. See how the siege ramps are built up to take the city. Because of the sword, famine, and plague, the city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians who are attacking it. What you said has happened, as you now see. And though the city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians, you, Sovereign Lord, say to me, Buy the field with silver, and have the transaction witnessed. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Therefore this is what the Lord says, I am about to give this city into the hands of the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon who will capture it. The Babylonians who are attacking this city will come in and set it on fire. They will burn it down along with the houses where the people aroused my anger by burning incense on the roofs to Baal and by pouring out drink offerings to other gods. The people of Israel and Judah have done nothing but evil in my sight from their youth. Indeed, the people of Israel have done nothing but arouse my anger with what their hands have made 
declares the Lord. From the day it was built until now, this city has so aroused my anger and wrath that I must remove it from my sight. The people of Israel and Judah have provoked me by all the evil they have done. They, their kings and officials, their priests and prophets, the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem. They turned their backs to me and not their faces. Though I taught them again and again, they would not listen or respond to discipline. They set up their vile images in the house that bears my name and defiled it. They built high places for Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech, though I never commanded, nor did it enter my mind, that they should do such a detestable thing and so make Judah sin. You are saying about this city, by the sword, famine, and plague, it will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them in my furious anger and great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them singleness of heart and action, so that they will always fear me, and that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me, so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice in doing them good, and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says. As I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all the prosperity I have promised them. Once more, fields will be bought in this land, of which you say, It is a desolate waste without people or animals, for it has been given into the hands of the Babylonians. Fields will be bought for silver, and deeds will be signed, sealed, and witnessed in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, in the towns of Judah, and in the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills, and of the Negev, because I will restore their fortunes, declares the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 33 while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses in this city and the royal palaces of Judah, that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the people I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from all the sin they have committed against me and will forgive all their sins of rebellion against me. Then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise and honor before all nations on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it and they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. This is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank-offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. His love endures for ever. 
for I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In this place, desolate and without people or animals, in all its towns, there will again be pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country of the western foothills, and of the Negev in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Saviour. For this is what the Lord says, David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel nor will the Levitical priests ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to present sacrifices. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says, If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time, then my covenant with David my servant and my covenant with the Levites who are priests ministering before me can be broken, and David will no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. And I will make the descendants of David my servant and the Levites who minister before me as countless as the stars in the sky and as measureless as the sand on the seashore. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Have you not noticed? that these people are saying, The Lord has rejected the two kingdoms he chose. So they despise my people and no longer regard them as a nation. This is what the Lord says. If I have not made my covenant with day and night and established the laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject the descendants of Jacob and David my servant and will not choose one of his sons to rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob 